Hey, it's Rainbow Rage, and this is uh, episode three of my uh, Inkscape tutorial series. And uh, yeah, so now now we've got everything set up. Uh, one thing we didn't set up uh, was the layers, really. And you can you can do the, your layers at the start or after, or like just like on the fly. I actually tend to just do layers on the fly, just like, so, but, you know, you just make sure it's all organized, right? Like, I like to have one for the head, one for the body, one for each leg. The tail gets its own vector. The main either has one layer or two layers, depending on how the bottom lane, the bottom main and the top one need to overlap. Um, the ear gets its own vector, and it's usually on top of everything else. Oh. Uh, and that for the on the head because it's a little com more complicated. Probably the eyes will also get their own layer. Um, so sorry I missed that last time. And uh, yeah, we're gonna gonna jump into some vectoring now. Uh, so it's vectoring is just just a game of uh, it's just it's fairly simple. You just have to you have to get used to it. You gotta get used to the tools. Uh, until you, until, uh, you can get it right. So, having a layer would be nice. There you go. So, uh, yeah, just make sure as, as, as you're going along, you know, put, like, you know, like I said in my last video, like, uh, upload your vectors, get critiques on them, um, you know, and uh, just just look be constantly improving. Like even I, like every time I make a vector, there's always there's something new I learn, a better way of doing something, or just a way to keep it cleaner. Oh, so there's that. So basically, we're gonna we're gonna throw down our points here, and we're just gonna make a single a single path instead of a closed object, and we're gonna right click to end that off. And the reason we do this is, instead of making it a closed object is because we want to use uh, a stroke, just, uh, yeah, just use a stroke here for our stroke line. And, uh, the reason for that is we want to keep our stroke widths consistent across, uh, the whole pony. And uh, you'll, you'll see that's, that's one of the most common errors that I see, um, new vector artists uh, one of the most common problems they have is they have inconsistent stroke widths. So the best way to fight that is um, by using the stroke feature. So you want to shift click on your stroke color here or shift or shift click with the dropper if you're using that. And that will give it a stroke. Go over to stroke style and uh, I'm not 50, I'm 5 here. And we're just trying to find find a stroke with that that works that works well on your first one you'll need to play with it a bit and then you know that actually that 4.8 looks about right then once you find it um it'll always be the same for that pony but it, it'll it'll be different on uh every every vector though depending on the how, how close your subject is to the uh how close your subject is to the camera, and uh, so I mean, almost here it's actually the corner is getting cut off. Um, so the way to fight that, you just to increase your miter limit here. See, ten is usually enough. If you need more than that, it gets a little ridiculous. Um, but uh, we're gonna have to actually convert this stroke into an object anyway, because we see we need to make it taper off on either end. Uh, so we hit uh, convert object stroke to path, and then we need a point on both ends. So we put those in, I'm actually going to delete these. Try to get this a nice, uh, nice looking stroke. 
it's all it's all it's all just playing with it until until it looks right really that's all it is Yeah, just play play with your strokes here until until they're perfect. Or they're never gonna be perfect, but you want you know until until they're good enough. And it's really the long the longer you play for with them, just the more accurate you'll be. Well, at su at some point, you it's best to just say it's good enough because you you could really you could play with these curves for. For all day, and they still they still won't uh, be perfect. But you want to get them very good. Uh, now now this this uh, this stroke here, it's gonna be probably one of your most complicated objects on the whole pony because it, it's got all these kind of curves and turns in it. Uh, for all your all your other strokes, like don't like uh, don't fall into the trap of making just one big complicated stroke across your whole pony like this is just like one line down there and then one curve around and then uh, just one curve here for the body like it's all separate simple curves I'll just show you how simple it gets uh, this this line here it's literally it's just a point on either end and, th and that's 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 your path really just drag it to fit Give it a curve. Give it the stroke color, four point eight, and you're done. See, you don't, we don't even need to convert this one because both ends are being covered up. Uh, nostril. A lot of people forget the nostril. Like they'll just forget about it. Um, always include your nostril because <laughs> it's supposed to be there. Uh, but it, it's just once again, it's just two points. Of the path just goes back and forth. Drag that out and make it a bit thicker. Just a little crescent shape. At the fill. There you go, nostril. I think here on the head we just have one more stroke here on the back. So remember the ear is its uh the ear will be its own object and layer. So we'll leave it out for now. Shift click to give our stroke color. Set our width. Is that object? And that's all. That's all the strokes on the head, because uh, it's not going to be a closed object here, because we have the mane and the ear are part of that. But those are all in separate layers, so we'll do those later. And uh, you can do all your strokes first, and then add fills, uh, or just do the fills as you go. Doesn't really matter. I like to do the fills as I go. So fills are really the easiest part. Like it, these can be as dirty as you need to. You don't have you don't need to have curves or anything. Just as long as you stay within the stroke, uh, it'll it'll be covered up. So it doesn't matter how ugly you make it. So now here we just double check to make sure. And you can zoom in real close to make sure. And I don't think I talked about zooming yet. Uh, Inkscape has a zoom tool. Um, it's useless. Well, no, it, it it zooms fine, but what you have instead, you can just click the middle mouse button, and that actually works exactly the same. Where if you click it, it'll zoom in by a step, and if you shift click middle mouse, you'll zoom out. So it's it's really you don't need to use the zoom tool tool at all if you just uh, use your middle mouse button there. But that's an aside. It's also... Inkscape is the only only program to do that, so I find myself when I'm ever not, when I'm ever not using Inkscape, I'll just be smashing the middle mouse button until I realize it's not Inkscape, so... <laughs> I'm rambling, though. I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Or not. Whatever I feel like. But anyway, once, once we're sure that... Uh, it's all right, or even before we're before we're sure, because we can always change it later. We'll assign our fill color, and it's going to be on top of everything at first because it is all in the same layer, and I made it last, so that looks really bad. 
but uh, you hit end, and end will send your object to the bottom of the layer. And uh, then that, like, you can't even tell that it's all, it's all ugly anymore because it's being covered up by the stroke. And there's our head. Uh, finally, one thing I like to do is uh, select everything on the head, everything in the layer, and group it together so that we can move it around as one. Uh, and you don't worry about, uh, yeah, so if you ever need to change it, you can move it all around as one. But you can still, when you, when you use your Edit Paths by Nodes tool, when you select something with that, you're only going to select a single path, even if they're grouped. But you can you can you can multi, you can select multiple paths if you need to work with more than one at once. Just by the same thing, shift clicking. Um, and then uh, if you control click with the select tool, you'll be, you can select single objects within a group. So those are handy tools. And uh, that is that is strokes and fills. There's not there's not much to it. It's just practice really. Um, so if there's anything in my videos that has been a little a little confusing that you're not too sure of, or if you have any other questions, feel free to keep asking, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can help you out with that. Uh, until next time, I'm Rainbow Rage. I'll see you later.